Kira Kesh. Okay, welcome. Um, so what we're going to talk about is a tool that people have done various courses with me will probably know quite well, but we wanted to introduce it on uh, the roots and resilience. So it's, um, yeah, people in the, the public can also see it, people who haven't particularly done courses with me. It's a tool that helps us basically to find balance. And what I'm hoping, if people are there, uh, is to do this in a kind of participatory way. So be prepared to switch your cameras or your microphones on and answer a few questions. So it'd be useful to know if people are actually there first, because I'm only seeing one camera on at the moment. That'd be great. Lovely. All right. Wonderful. Thanks very much. Good to know everyone's there. So I'm going to start with a short presentation uh, on, it should be this one. So I'll just quickly introduce what Prama actually is, and then we'll go into more of the kind of discussion side of it, which is say, we'll try and make as participatory as possible. So Prama, so similar to how we were talking about uh, when we were talking about macrobiotics, about balance and about um, homeostasis, the, the, the term that we use in, uh, so Prama, I should point out, is a tantric tool. So it's a tool that comes from a, a kind of Indian tradition, which uh, helps us to find balance in life. So the term in tantra that's used for that is equipoise. Uh, or rather, that's how it's translated into English. So again, how do we find this balance, this balance between all the different forces and energies that we have around us and within us? And so we'll look at it from, um, you know, so we want to look at our kind of physical balance, our mental balance, as well as our spiritual balance. And before we kind of get in, you know, most people, it's quite obvious what is physical, you know, that, that's us, that's our physical body. Um, um, mental is also fairly easy to define. It's, you know, it's kind of our thoughts, it's our feelings. So it's, you know, a mixture of emotions, though actually many of those are stimulated by hormones and therefore are actually physical, but we experience them because we mentally process these ideas to start thinking about them and so we react to them in a mental way if that makes sense uh, but spiritual is the one that's a little bit more difficult to define because everyone has a different interpretation and a different relationship with the term spiritual so the way that I like to try and simplify it for the sake of this exercise and for the sake of this tool is if we think, you know, physical is about us. It's physically, you know, our, um, you know, something tangible, something we can touch. If mental is something that is more, you know, in our thoughts, in our mind, something that we can process um, and contemplate, that's more mental. So we've got the, the physical body, we've got the inner workings, the kind of the, the mental. So the way that I like to define spiritual is any kind of relationship that we as this entity ourselves, how we relate to anything that is not ourselves. So as I say, that won't work for many people's definition of spiritual, but it's how I like to frame it just for the sake of this exercise, as I say, so, so spiritual could be how you relate with outdoors, how you relate with, you know, with nature, with uh, plants, with animals, how you relate to other human beings. Um, as I say, it doesn't completely work 100%, but for the sake of this exercise, that's maybe a definition that, that we can maybe agree on to, to, to work with for, as I say, this exercise alone. So, Prama is about how we find this subtle, I say, ever-changing, subtle balance between our mental, you know, our mental, physical, and spiritual realms. Um, and we do it by further breaking it down. So each of these realms, so the physical, 
we look at the things that we consider to be food, i.e. what allows us to grow, what feeds us, what keeps us going. It's like fuel almost. So what is physical fuel? What is physical food? What is mental fuel, mental uh, uh, food? What about spiritual? What do we mean by, you know, spiritual food, you know, spiritual fuel? Then we can start looking at um, exercise, what allows us to grow, expand, become stronger, become bigger, more, you know, richer in, um, in, a, in, in, in a positive sense. You know, so we can look at it from, uh, again, physical. What kind of, what, for us, what is good physical exercise? Now, what do we mean by good physical exercise? And what I'll invite you to do later on in this exercise, because what we will look at today is mostly going to be food, is maybe to start thinking about, well, for me, how am I meeting my physical food needs? And we'll have a discussion around, well, what, what do we consider to be good? What am I currently doing? So that then we can start analysing it and then thinking about, well, what are the things that maybe I would like to introduce into um, my way of being? So, yes, yeah, so we'll look at physical food, spiritual food, and mental food. But for this, you know, just to introduce this particular exercise, we'll look at the other realms. So yeah, so exercise is about growth. It's about what allows us to expand, become stronger, et cetera, et cetera, richer. And the third one is rest. And within rest, and you know, so you could either put it within rest or you could actually have it as a separate entity, also comes cleansing. So rest is about whew, recuperation, about allowing to give ourselves time to recover. And, um, and cleansing is, is, is a very subtle, yeah, it's, it's more or less part of the same entity, but it's about how we physically let go of things or mentally let go of things or spiritually let go of things. So how do we, yes, yeah, so those are the kind of realms. Um, so, yeah, and if we have a, a balance of all of those, you know, so if we, when we start looking at this and when we start using this tool, and you know, to be honest, the, the full exercise takes two, maybe three hours, and we've only got half an hour here, so we're just going to do a, a short version of it. Um, but if we find that we're imbalanced in one particular area, then, again, it's about, you know, we, we find this kind of homeostasis, but at what level? You know, where, where do we find this homeostasis? Where, where is this balance that we actually find? Is it actually healthy for us? Um, you know, so, so this kind of um, critique shape uh, then becomes a little bit skewed. Oops, I see my camera's also died. Um, so I don't know, can you still hear me? Or is my... Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, it's just my camera that's, that's died in that case. So yeah, so this, this shape, this beautiful balanced shape, you know, so where you've got the, the two different uh, concepts which are perfectly in balance with each other, creates this beautiful balanced shape. Whereas if we are, you know, um, yeah, I don't know, if we, if we don't get enough, let's say physical exercise or something, and, you know, so we're more kind of into this spiritual kind of, you know, we're growing very spiritually, but we're neglecting our physical entity or vice versa this shape becomes very skewed if you see what i mean and this is imbalanced so yeah so we're looking at say food rest um and exercise and and cleansing um from again uh, from the, the kind of physical mental and spiritual realm but in our case what we'll start looking at today is looking at the physical, uh, sorry, food aspect of it. Um, so I'm going to stop the sharing there. So, yeah. Um, so let's start off with, with food. You know, we've, we've already talked a little bit about macrobiotics, so it, that kind of comes in neatly. Um, what, what do we consider to be good, balanced, healthy food who'd like to offer some kind of definition or, or their interpretation of what they consider to be good healthy food okay go for it yeah anything that's not processed really fresh seasonal 
absolutely locally yes. grown food that is not processed yeah exactly so i don't know what's going on with my camera sorry about that it seems to be um freezing again but yeah um good healthy unprocessed foods actually can you still hear me because everything's frozen now yeah. yeah okay yeah we can hear you yeah sorry about this uh tech problem um so yeah good healthy seasonal you know local foods um which yeah which basically help us to to you know give us nutrients give us energy and as I say that are kind of very um yeah in season i they're, they're growing at the time of year uh and you know so they have a particular energy a particular vibration at, for being for manifesting itself at that time of the year and therefore there's a reason as to why it's growing at that time of year it's right for you it's it's when you're supposed to be eating it um and in order to then and, and and as sophie was was mentioning earlier how you know there's a real trend for example for uh raw vegan food you know uh, raw raw yeah raw vegan food which um you know in a cold country how where are you going to get this fresh food from it just isn't available and uh you know you can't grow it yourself so so there's certain things that we need to do uh but you know the, the least amount of processing we put into the food the the more balanced the food is for us so is there some way that people can think of to actually preserve these foods so that you know so if you do want a certain food stuff at a time of year where it isn't growing how could we yeah how could we achieve that how where, where could we get these nutrients from how could we preserve it fermenting <laughs> pickling fermenting freezing exactly. so fermenting in particular is really interesting because it helps uh, the the actual lactobacilli that is the most common form of fermentation it's, it's not the only way but the most common is uh, it actually helps to break down uh, the actual whatever it is your your fermenting and actually unlock many of the nutrients it also adds a lot of probiotic um, bacterias and therefore it's actually not only preserving it but it's actually making it healthier, making it easier for us to digest. So it's a really fascinating um, way of, yeah, keeping food so that we can use it later on in the year. So, I don't know, um, what are some of the ways that you, you're currently meeting your food needs? Now, when we do this exercise for proper, for real, we actually get people to write down, you know, really honestly, yeah, 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 I'm getting you know, 50% of my food from a supermarket, which is not organic. I'm getting maybe 30% from a farmer's market and maybe 10% from my back garden and a little bit of, you know, so we'll be honest. And that's, that's you know, if we want to use this tool properly, it's really essential to, to be honest, to actually see where you're actually getting your nutrients and your, your food from. So do you want to maybe just shout out uh, or even type into the chat some of the, the kind of ways that, you're, that you are currently getting your, your food balance from? And yeah, feel free to be completely honest. So this year, for the first time, I feel like the majority of my food is food that I've grown in the community garden and in my forest garden. Cool. And so, yeah, in the, the chat, we've got farm shops and supermarkets. And that's, and that's you know, totally realistic. That's, you know, um, the majority of people probably are uh, getting things from the supermarket. Um, someone else has added most vegetables and fruits from a farmer's market. Wonderful. And fresh fruit and veg I grow, I've grown wonderful other dried goods also from supermarkets 
a good percentage from a biological market, the rest from a supermarket. So this is realistic, you know. Um, I would say when I actually analysed, so the first year of the, the lockdown, I actually was very intentionally counting the food, where I'm getting it from and so on and so forth. And throughout the year, something like 80% of all my food was coming from my garden or foraged, i.e. going out into the wild and picking it. Um, I was getting very, very, very little from supermarkets and um, other shops. Um, I would say that's probably this year, maybe about 70%. So, um, yeah, it's, it kind of, yeah, it varies. So, you know, it's, it's about working out. Um, all right. So, so then the next thing we can start looking at is how healthy is that for us? And, you know, you don't need to answer this yourself. But uh, I think most of us can agree that anything that's come from a supermarket, even if it is organic, the chances of it being uh, nutritionally dense and therefore, you know, the you know, small amount that you need to eat gives you and really feeds you well. In most cases, food that you get from a supermarket, I say, even if it is organic, um, because of how it's been grown, is not very, it doesn't have much nutrients in it. And so you, you're eating, you're consuming a certain amount of food. And in order for your body to break it down, you need energy. It takes energy out of your system just to break it down to release the actual nutrients. And therefore, if the food itself doesn't have much nutrients because of how it's been grown, you don't get enough nutrients in the body saying, excuse me, but um, yeah, I need to eat more because I'm just not getting enough food. And so you end up having to uh, consume more and more and more. Whereas if you're predominantly growing a lot of your own food, which is very nutritionally dense, what you find is you actually, especially if you eat in a really balanced way, you actually need, you know, and, you know, and there's lots of different ways of looking at what that means. You actually need to eat very little food. You'd be surprised at how little you need to eat to really give you so much energy. And I guess one way of really being able to tell uh, where am I on that kind of line is uh, things like, you know, well, how much do I have to sleep, for example? Do I sleep for five hours and then wake completely, totally refreshed? Or after eight hours, I'm still groggy and, and what have you, you know? Uh, how much is your body having to process now, it may not just be about physical food, because that's also about mental, you know. So if you're thinking a lot, if you're in this kind of um, in a frame of mind where you're really con continuously thinking, 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 positive or negative, but especially negative, that again takes a huge amount of energy out of you. So it really drains you. So in kind of conclusion uh, uh, for physical food, is as much as possible to see how you can create a balanced diet with as much local nutritionally dense foods and how can you be finding out how to actually combine foods in a positive way one again one of the things that i i kind of struggle a little bit with you know in doing so many courses is 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 very often other people are cooking for me and very few people uh understand food the way that i understand it which is about combinations and so they'll put combinations of foods together that just don't work so certain things for example uh, uh need uh, you know e each food stuff needs a certain amount of time to digest in your stomach so it needs a certain amount of acid and if you're combining lots and lots of things you know, it stands to reason that one thing may need five hours to process and therefore needs a, and with a lot of really intense, uh, very high amount of hydrochloric acid, whereas something else may only need 40 minutes and, you know, it doesn't need so much acid. And so if you've got all these mixed together in your stomach, you know, we're not cows, we're, we're humans, we only have one stomach. It's all mixed into one stomach. It stands to reason that some things are going to be over 
processed, fermented, or which is what leads to things like gas. And other things are going to be under digested, which means that you don't actually get most of the nutrients from it. So again, about combining your foods is another really essential way of, of really finding that balance. And um, okay, I think I'm going to leave it there because I now want to look at um, um, exercise. So physical exercise. What do we mean by good physical exercise? What does that actually even mean? What is good physical exercise? How would you interpret that? Nothing that's too demanding. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's enough, in, enough work that you're actually going to do something. Um, benefit what? your heart and your strength and your flexibility. All of those things. Why do you need exercise? What's what's the actual purpose of physical exercise? I know Sarah, you I saw you unmute yourself. Did you want to contribute? I was gonna say something if you feel good after you've done it, I uh -huh. think that's good exercise. Yeah, I guess um so for some people, the kind of endorphins that are released through, you know, really excessive, really pushing yourself can make them feel good. Um, is that necessarily healthy? Is it too much? That's maybe a slightly different. But uh, but yeah, if you definitely feel oh, totally, uh, totally, you know, um, drained or physically injured, even then clearly that's uh, that's obviously excessive. Yeah, but what, what's why? Why do we need exercise? Why can't we just eat well and just potter around? And what what's the repercussion of that? Okay, so someone's saying joints to stop working and our muscles will atrophy. Yep, will absolutely. Wither and seize up. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think yep. naturally we would, if we were living in more natural lives, we would be just ex doing exercise as part of our everyday staying Absolutely. alive and so sure. our bodies are meant to do that but we we have such our lives are you know we, we're so sedentary that we kind of have to artificially put that into <laughs> our lives now brilliant there's one really important aspect you know on top of what you've all said um which is our lymph system so all of the uh, the kind of junk, shall we say, all the, the you know, our lymph system is basically our sewage system. It's how we get rid of uh, various toxins. And the lymph uh, does not have any form of pump. So there's no way to physically move it other than physical movement. So when we physically move, we're actually, that's what, it's that physical movement that forces uh, movement in the lymph and moving toxins out to our lymph nodes to then eliminate through whatever sweat glands and this, that, and the other. So, yeah, so there's a certain amount of physical movement that we need to do, um, you know, a certain amount of, of limbering up, certain amounts, you know, which is why things like asanas, you know, the physical yoga postures are so useful because many of them are really thinking about how you stretch and compress every single gland and node, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, it's not just exercise. It's really well thought through exercises for your internal organs, especially your glands and what have you. Um, so, yeah, so th there's various other, you know, um, yeah, other exercises. So a little bit of getting your heart beating and really, you know, getting a little bit out of breath, but not too much not so that to the point where you kind of start to crash by the way how much time do i actually have five minutes perfect okay thank you very much good timing um so the last aspect is exercise oh sorry is uh, rest and uh, recuperation or cleansing so what do we mean about you know also um actually no we're talking about f yeah 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 sorry a uh, little bit Physical rest. <laughs> what am I talking about now then? Physical rest. Physical rest. So, um, yeah, physical rest. What is, um, what do we mean by physical rest? Ah, so I spoke, okay, sorry. I jumped from food 
sorry, now I've realized to just doing physical only. Uh, my apologies, I, yeah. Uh, anyway, so physical, um, yeah, rest and cleansing. What do we mean by physical rest and cleansing? What does that mean to us? Sleep. Yeah, sleep is one very good way. And it's also, you know, so each of our organs are very, very active. And, um, and you know, and throughout the day, you know, it takes a lot of energy, brain power, as well as, you know, to actually keep the system going. And at some point, um, you know, each of those organs needs to rest and cleanse itself. It needs to purify. It, it needs a time to just be able to reset. And so sleep is a really um, important aspect, is a, is a really important tool in that process. Now, which again, is why if we are if we find that we are you know we, we don't sleep well or that we are um uh having to sleep really long and we wake up unrefreshed this is a really clear sign that our physical body isn't cleansing you know itself properly it means that our bodies are over uh, you know either because it's too toxic there's too much you know um things in our physical system that are not being cleaned and not being cleansed properly. And therefore, at nighttime, it's trying to do this. And if the body is struggling, it kind of agitates different organs, and um, which is why you you're kind of you can't sleep well, because you're you're kind of, you know, your, your organs are continuously agitated and disturbing you. So again, um, yeah, physical rest, you know, um, the, the more balance you have from a, um, you know, in terms of your food um, and, you know, later on when we talk about, you know, the mental and spiritual, the more you can start um, resting, you know, yeah, finding balance in all the rest of those realms will ultimately help you to cleanse, you know, uh, physically. And so, so, yeah, so we need a certain amount of exercise, which helps us to you know, to, to relieve ourselves of certain uh, toxins and things. Um, and yeah, I know I'm running out of time, so I'm going to wrap up. There's plenty more I could say. So the key thing is, it's about finding balance. It's about finding this balance between all these different realms so that, um, yeah, so that we, you know, yeah, our, our body ha has the ability to... Yeah, to feed itself, to grow, to rest, to recuperate, and therefore really serve us or mentally, physically, and spiritually. I'm going to kind of leave it there. So I could talk on for hours and hours and hours. But is there any questions that we have in the last couple of minutes? Is there anything? What time are we supposed to go up till, Sophie? Um, so the whole event is till half past. But I've just given you a bit right. of extra time because there are not so many people to check out. Okay. So yeah, we've got time for a question before the check. Time for one, one maximum two questions. Is there anything? Okay. okay. Fasting. Fasting. Fasting is is another really useful tool because that, um, and depending on how you fast as well, there's lots of different styles. So um, one style that that I in particular practice is where I don't eat or drink for. A full waking day and uh, what this does is it really allows all of your organs to really rest themselves even during the waking day um, and then the following morning you, using warm salty lemon water you can then physically flush your system as well and so it really but the other important part aspect of fasting is is also psychological it's mental it's very much about because you're as you're feeling hunger it allows you to connect to you know what else is happening in the world it allows you to think about people for example who uh, don't have um you know for whom this hunger feeling is not a choice it's their circumstances poverty and um 
and it allows you to connect and empathize and understand a little bit and and contemplate their predicament um in the indian tradition as well also on this particular day ekadashi which um sophie has typed into the um yeah the chat forum uh is uh yeah you, you also that's the day where you do service work in sanskrit we call it seva this is where you do charity for others so you dedicate that day to not yourself but to others but in the process of doing that because of how contemplative you are it really strengthens you as well and so yeah so it's it's not like ramadan which is what someone's put in the the chat um because ramadan is like 40 days where you do not eat or drink for the while the sun is up until the sun sets so you only eat when after the sunset um and so um whereas what this is is the full waking day so maybe whatever six seven o'clock the evening is when you have your last meal and then for the rest of the next day you don't eat anything or drink anything in my particular case as well eat or drink and then the next morning is when you break your fast whatever time four five six seven eight whenever you wake up kind of thing and so you break fast and um and then then you have really light meals throughout the day and for the next few days and remineralize yourself in a, a, a nice way so um if people are interested in this we actually do um a full course called a holistic life design course where uh, we do one online and one physically in, in person as well where we look at this um but then we go into a lot more detail so we'll look at the physical body as if it is a permaculture system so we'll look at you know the endocrine system the the digestive system we'll look at uh, you know all you know um all the different systems in terms of what feeds it what allows it to keep going what allows it to cleanse and how do we see when it's not working so that we can then find ways to actually start uh, repairing it. and and we'll then start introducing uh, naturopathy so different tricks that you can do just simple things you know using simple things that you'll have in your home so you don't have to go out and buy expensive materials or find fancy you know drugs and herbs and things that grow on the opposite side of the world it's just day-to-day -day things that you can do that you're going to have in your kitchen already to help you find balance in all the different realms and then we put that through a permaculture design process so um yeah so you can actually um see how you can start implementing some of these into your lifestyle so some people here have already done that process we've got one course coming up in in oct in april which will be online and then we'll do another physical in-person one in wiltshire in i think october and that one will be um is where we'll actually do a lot more of you know we'll actually walk through a lot of the physical treatments as well and everyone gets a treatment which is really lovely everyone gets a little iridology session as well so we can actually see what's really going on in your system it's really fun it's really really fun so um yeah, yeah i can and recommend this course i've done it before with rakesh and sunil and yeah it was a really eye-opening beautiful experience and yeah i imagine doing it face to face will be even more fulfilling yeah and in ireland we're going to do a one day session in kerry on um yeah on exactly this subject as well so wonderful i'm going to leave it there thank you all very much and i'm going to at this point stop the recording as well okay thank